Welcome. Now we're going to work on chest tube setup. For the purposes of CPE skills, the psychomotor skill that we are focusing on is actually do you understand how to assemble one of these chest tubes and what it means for your patient who may have a chest tube in place. In the hospital setting, chest tubes would come in a sterile package and you would open them up at the time that the physician was ready to put it into the patient. For the purposes of CPEs, as you can see, we don't even have any that aren't missing parts. But what I want to focus on for you for study and review is that you know what goes where and how this is going to work. Basically, what you would do is you would open the package sterilely and you would take out the device and you would turn this little foot piece so that it could stand upright. You would take this tubing right here and hook it with a funnel or a sterile syringe that came in the packaging with it. Pull my plunger out here, like so. And you would add 70 milliliters of sterile water. Okay, not tap water, sterile water. So you pour 70 milliliters into here. And what that 70 milliliters is going to do is fill to this line that says zero right here on the front of the device. It's actually the equivalent of two centimeters of mercury. And students always say, but that doesn't look like 70 mLs. That's because if you see on the back here, I went ahead and filled it in blue so you could see where the water actually collects in the back. So you do have 70 milliliters of water in here, the sterile water, and I denoted that in blue. The dial for suction is here, and you would just dial it to whatever your prescriptive um, amount was, whatever the physician deemed appropriate, usually between 15 and 20. So you dial that in. That is pretty much all you need to worry about on here. Now, once you have this set up, you would take this tubing that you use to put the water in to create a seal, you would hook this to your wall suction, and you would turn on your wall suction to a medium setting, roughly 80 to 120, okay? The amount of suction on the wall does not determine how much suction the patient actually gets. That is determined by this dry suction control dial that we've already set to the prescribed amount that the physician has deemed appropriate. Okay, At that point, you are ready to go. The physician will insert the chest tube, as we will go over in class. And when he is all done and ready, you will take your end of the chest tube, which is here, and he will take his end of the chest tube, which for this particular setup is here because it has an extension looping. Um, if, it didn't, if it didn't have this, then this part here would go directly to your chest tube in the patient. You will put them together and secure them with either commercial ties, as demonstrated here, or silk tape to make sure the connection is tight and firm and that they're not going to accidentally pull apart. Once this is in place and ready to go and you've turned on your suction, you should start to see if there is any drainage, drainage accumulating in these chambers here. And this is where you will mark your drainage each and every shift or every so many hours, whatever is dictated. Remembering that this device should never be higher than the level of the patient. This would normally be sitting down low on the floor using securing um, devices to hook it to the bed frame so that it doesn't tip over like such. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I have it up on a table so you can see. That is one half of your CPE skill. Just being able to remember that the water goes into here, two centimeters of mercury or 70 milliliters of water, that creates your water seal. Then it gets hooked to suction at the wall, turned to medium. The suction is prescribed by the physician and that's denoted here. And then lastly, the drainage collection tubing is hooked to your patient's chest tube. 
If it is a pneumothorax, air will accumulate in this and you will not see anything. If it is a hemothorax, then it will start to accumulate blood. You're looking at the color, the consistency, the thickness, making sure that you don't have any clots in the tubing, making sure that the tubing is always too low and not dependent with loops. And that concludes the setup of your chest tube for CPEs. Then you need to verbalize that you would also and complete an assessment looking at the dressing, palpating lightly for crepitus around the tubes. If you notice crepitus, you need to mark it. It should not be expanding. It should be getting better each day. You're going to do pulse oximetry. You're going to look at color, listen to lung sounds bilaterally, assess the trachea for a midline position, and make sure that you note your ECG tracing for any differences or possible arrhythmias. This concludes the chest tube for CPEs.